kick off the first in a new six-part series which charts the best of Scottish musical talent. From indie superstars Teenage Fan Club to ex communard Jimmy Somerville and a feast of pop giants in between. Local Heroes next Saturday at 11.20. has got it all. Milk, glucose, malt, and thick, thick chocolate. Have you got the taste for it? This summer, Ford has three Fiesta specials, all at the same price, which is right for you. Number three, the Fiesta Equipe, has a gutsy 1.3 engine, power steering, radio cassette, and tailgate wash wipe. And like the other Fiestas, it has a driver's airbag and safeguard engine immobilizer as standard, and all for £7,695. See the Fiesta specials at your Ford showroom now. The Fiesta Equipe, it's much more of a car. This summer at Sweet Center, your chance to get a superb three-piece suite, but only pay for half of it. Prices start at just £499. There's up to three years interest-free credit, monthly payments from £17, £100 part exchange for your old suite, and no deposit. Don't miss the great Sweet Center 50% free offer, now on at all branches. Summer's just about here, but don't panic. If you get on the Slim Fast plan today, you could lose 10 pounds in a month. The plan's easy. The calories have been counted, the... Fat grams have been computed. You don't even have to think about nutrition. It's all in there. A shake for breakfast, one for lunch, a sensible dinner, even bars of snacks. So start today. By the time the weather heats up, you could look really hot. Slim Fest. Come on, start today. You could lose 10 pounds in a month. Have you ever noticed how some things in life fit you naturally? Like Tampax tampons. They fit naturally, adapting to your body. Tampax tampon soft fibers absorb gently, giving you all the protection you need. So for a natural fit, try Tampax tampon. He's gonna buy paint. And she's going to buy paint too, because whenever she asks him to get anything, he always gets it wrong. And if she has to come, so does he. And him. But they don't have to go through all this palaver. They can do this. Hello, Davis DIY. Have you got any Cardinal Red eggshell in stock? About two litres? Cardinal Red eggshell, two litres? No. Oh. But I can get it for you. It's going to take a couple of days. I don't suppose you delivered, do you? Are you local? Mason's Estate. Oh. I think just round the corner. Well, got that lot sorted, eh? So, they all get back in the car for a nice day out in the country. Thanks to one phone call that costs less lolly than a lolly. It's good to talk. The Argos sale is so great! <laughs> I just can't get over it. baby is devastating. Not only to parents, but the whole family. I know I lost my baby eight years ago. I felt totally isolated and that somehow I was to blame for what happened. Contacting Sands was a turning point in my life. Talking to people who have gone through the same experience helps you come to terms with your loss. We'll never forget our baby, but through Sands we've picked up the pieces. If we can help you, please telephone 031 441 2207 now or write to SAN, Action 2000, Box 2000, Glasgow. Coming up later tonight, the Scottish at 10.50, Clint Eastwood stars in the ultimate spaghetti western, the classic, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Now it's time to catch up with the latest news from ITN with Nicholas Owen and the sport from Graham Miller. <laughs> Good evening, the news and sport from ITN. 
For headlines, another Euro crisis, Mr Major at odds with other leaders over a new commissioner. Reports that Prince Charles wants to break the royal link with the Church of England. And tonight's main sports news, Jack Charlton is banned and fined for World Cup misbehaviour. The Prime Minister returned home from the Corfu summit tonight, having left Britain isolated within the European Union once again. He vetoed the appointment of Belgium's Jean-Luc Dehaene as the next President of the European Commission, even though he was the choice of the 11 other nations. The deadlock looks likely to continue with France and Germany determined to see Dehaene succeed Jacques Delors. John Major had first switched sides backing the Dutch Prime Minister Ruud Lubbers instead of his own candidate, Sir Leon Britton. Then, in a dramatic move, he used the British veto to block Jean-Luc Dehaene of Belgium, the man favoured by all 11 other states. This afternoon, he explained why he couldn't go along with the majority. This is not a personal matter. It's not a matter of anything other than the desirability of who should be the president of the commission. It is not a question of nationality, but I took the view that there were better qualified candidates than Jean-Luc to meet the requirements of this particular job. The man they'd rejected condemned the use of the veto. Well, that's a dangerous situation, and I think uh, your major take big risks today. Uh, but I hope that uh, the, the German council can uh, solve them. Suddenly, in the heat of a Greek afternoon, the European Union was in turmoil. Britain once again isolated. President Mitterrand of France said he wouldn't abandon Mr. Dehaene, nor should the others. The Greek Prime Minister, who'd hosted the meeting, accused Britain of being undemocratic. Everybody but Britain supported Dehaene. We followed the democratic procedure. And uh, Great Britain literally vetoed this procedure. What happens now depends very much on the Germans who take over the running of the European Union for the next six months. They may well have to find a new candidate. What isn't clear is whether the person they choose will be any more palatable to the British government than Jean-Luc Dehaene. Libby Wiener, ITN, Corfu. Euro enthusiasts in the Conservative Party say the Prime Minister's position is potentially very dangerous. Tory Euro sceptics are urging him to stand firm. The Liberal Democrat leader Paddy Ashdown says Mr Major is more concerned with appeasing Neanderthal backbenchers than with Britain's interests in Europe. A long way from Corfu on an English cricket field, an extra spring in the step today for Bill Cash, a leading player in the Conservative anti-European team. He and other Tory MPs welcomed the Prime Minister's decision to stand his ground. Well, there's no question at all. It's a very important intermediate step in the right direction. But we, we, we need to follow this up so that we do actually get some concrete proposals. We have to learn to say no, politely and firmly. I freely concede that at this precise moment it appears to be uh, costing us um, friendship and support in certain places. But I believe it is the right way forward. It's not the way forward, says Labour's Jack Cunningham. It's damaged Britain's standing in Europe. Our country's best interests are always damaged when we're isolated and alone, when important decisions are taken in the European Union. And this is just another example of where Mr Major has got his political strategy completely wrong. The Conservative Positive European group are understood to be concerned at today's developments. They say that behind the scenes they'll be demanding to know whether Mr Major has a coherent game plan or whether he's simply looking for short-term credit within the party at the expense of Britain's long-term interests in Europe. QPM ITN, Westminster. The Prince of Wales wants to end the monarch's role as head of the Church of England and defender of the faith, according to tomorrow's Sunday Times. It says Prince Charles wants to break with the 450-year-old tradition when he becomes king because Britain is now a multi-faith society. Prince Charles, at a colour ceremony in Aberdeen today, is said to want an end to a tradition dating back to the time of King Henry VIII in the 16th century. He believes that when he succeeds the Queen, he ought to become a figurehead for all religions in Britain. Tomorrow, Sunday Times, Prince quotes it says are taken from a documentary to be broadcast on ITV this coming Wednesday. Referring to the fact that the monarch is traditionally head of the Protestant-established church, the prince is quoted as saying, 
I happen to believe that the Catholic subjects are as important, not to mention the Islamic and Hindu. It's a decision that's proving controversial. To lose the spiritual uh, link for the, for the nation would be a sign that that no longer matters. And I think many other faiths and other Christian denominations would want a link to be um, held and continued. This is the way you solve the problem of his divorce and his marriage. The opposition to his divorce essentially comes from within the Church of England. Whatever his motives, Prince Charles's decision is already being welcomed by the leaders of other faiths. They say it will encourage religious tolerance. Russian troops about to pull out of Germany marched through Berlin today, 50 years after splitting it in two as communism was imposed in the East. It was the biggest show of Russian military strength in Berlin since they celebrated victory over Hitler's forces. America, Britain and France had prevented them joining in the farewell parade held by the Western Allies last week. Now sport and Graham Miller. Jeremy Bates is keeping British interest alive into the second week at Wimbledon. He qualified for the last 16 by beating Germany's Marker Zoka, thundering serve and all. Quiet, please. With the last British player on centre court, it was a forlorn hope. A 12 o'clock start meant that only the genuine fans were in the stands, but for the Jeremy Bates fan club, this was a day to remember. Their hero had no trouble winning the first set. It was just as easy in the second against a German giant who looked less than comfortable at the net. Marcus Zoke, though, had one thing going for him. That equaled the fastest ever serve in tennis history, 134 miles an hour. It cost Bates the third set, but he rallied in the fourth, took a 5-3 lead, and thrived as the tension built up. Then, with his wife, Ruth, behind him, Bates booked his place in the last 16. And the noise was incredible. I, mean, I thought the whole place was going to just fall down. You, know? <laughs> <laughs> you appreciate it? Yeah, it's very nice. Yeah. Okay, I travel 30 weeks of the year and I get abused 29 of them. So <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit nice to have one week when everyone's screaming for me. <laughs> Martina's farewell tour continues. The legs may be slower these days, but against Linda Harvey Wilde, experience was more than enough. Peter Thornton, ITN, Wimbledon. Jack Charlton's been banned from the touchline for Ireland's crucial World Cup game against Norway for abusing officials. He's also been fined £10,000. This is the incident that has infuriated soccer's governing body. John Aldridge cursing at officials who stopped him from coming on as substitute. Yes, three minutes. Jack Charlton furious at the official who orders him away. For this, he's been fined £10,000 and banned from the touchline. Aldrich has been fined £1,500. The only thing I've ever shouted to a referee was, can we give him a drink of water? A World Cup official has said Charlton is being banned for constant misbehaviour. In the first game against Italy, he again complained that Aldrich couldn't get on quickly enough and that he couldn't get water to his players. Just see the manager and then uh, we'll talk about it later. <laughs> Charlton is the first manager of this World Cup to be disciplined. Aldrich didn't seem to be so concerned. World Cup officials say Charlton will have to watch Tuesday's game against Norway from the stands and communicate with his substitutes and his assistant by mobile telephone. For a game that's already pressured enough, it's another burden he and Ireland could do without. Bill Neely, ITN, Orlando. In tonight's game, Belgium got through to the next stage, beating Holland 1-0. Both sides had their chances, but the only goal was scored by Philippe Albert. In cricket, Robin Smith made 134 for Hampshire, but too late, perhaps, to save his place in the test team. And Linford Christie got angry after being warned for a false start in the European Team Championships at Birmingham. But he still won his race. That's it from Graham, me and all the news team. Good night. Good night.
Hello, good evening. Well, straight away, let's deal with tonight's weather. And thankfully, those thunderstorms have now more or less faded away. They're off the scene. We have a slight hiccup, though, in the form of some mist and fog patches floating around. And that's because we haven't got a lot of wind tonight, but obviously a high moisture content on the ground. So do watch out for this, just in case you're out and about on the roads. The other thing is up in the very far northwest, we've that cloud piling up with even more rain moving in. So straight away, let's deal with tomorrow's weather. Do watch out for that mist and fog early on. It ought to burn off quite quickly. Not quite so the cloud. That will tend to linger on more. But we do have some brightness breaking through as well. Now, further north, yet again, it's a case of that rain, some fairly hefty rain, long periods, drier interludes as well. And then during the course of the afternoon, where that rain slowly but surely extends across to eastern Scotland, but it will take its time to get there. And again, some fairly heavy bursts of rain. Further south, we've got that cloud tending to melt away and even more sunshine coming through. So a brighter field of things all in all. Here a high of 22 or 72, 16 or 61 in the very far north and a blowy day with it. Here's the summary. Sponsored by Powergen, a partner in Kinetica Natural Gas. Next week, meet the people that matter. Kim Bassinger, Paul Hogan, Bad Girl Drew Barrymore, Good Guy Philip Schofield. There's the very best in music from the B-52s and Diana Ross. And from the world of politics, Margaret Beckett and Jonathan Dimbleby. Next week on GMTV. Engines constantly tuned by computers. Suspensions that give an iron grip and a ride like silk. ABS that senses the surface each wheel is on. You might expect this technology in a supercar, but standard in a family saloon? You can with a Nissan. Big new bottle, crisp new taste. With Stena Ceiling Line, you can enjoy very nice prices every single day of the year. This is a doorstep challenge, not for this powder, but for a new mystery powder. Julie, hello. Julie, <laughs> Julie, Julie. You've been trying this mystery powder for us, haven't you? Yes, I have. Can we see the results? Yeah. I must admit, they're a lot whiter, and I've not had to put any of them back in the wash. Normally, she's got all the stains where she's had a drink, some biscuits and what have you. But they've all come off. Same with the little white pants. They're a lot whiter. Hiya, Julie. Oh, my. <laughs> and look what it was. New Dares Ultra. You they think they could make it better, but they are. You <laughs> new Dares Ultra. More power for whiter whites. And still at the right price. Oh, the boys would like these for a match tonight. Four cheeseburgers in buns, just one forty nine. Way below, way below, way below. Bound foods. Our prices are way below. Save, save, save in Textile World's scorching summer sale. We have all the love in the world. If that's all we have, you will find we need nothing more. Got it all. Milk, glucose, malt, and thick, thick chocolate. Have you got the taste for it?
Good evening, and now the weather for tonight and tomorrow. The unsettled weather of the last few days looks like staying with us until the start of next week, but things should improve after that. There's a dry night in store for most of the country, but there might be an odd mist patch in some rural areas. Temperatures will be a little lower than last night, reaching about 8 or 9 degrees Celsius, that's 48 degrees Fahrenheit. Tomorrow will start dry in many places, but cloud will already be thickening up from the west, with rain spreading into Argyll in the morning. The east coast should see little, if any, rain. Temperatures for tomorrow will range from a cool 13 degrees Celsius, that's 55 Fahrenheit in the west, to a near normal 17 degrees Celsius, that's 63 degrees Fahrenheit in the east. The southwesterly wind will increase steadily throughout the day. So that's all from me for the moment. Here's a summary. Do have a very good night. Americans aren't supposed to know anything about football. Shame nobody told the U.S. team. Oh, no! In a major change to tomorrow night's schedule. Can Team USA go all the way into the last 16? USA versus Romania live ITV tomorrow at 10. Kevin Costner stars in an epic masterpiece this Sunday. Winner of seven Oscars, it's the film that shouldn't be missed. Dances with Wolves, Sunday at 8.30 on Scottish. Now three men search for Confederate gold during the American Civil War in the classic spaghetti western The Good, The Bad and The Ugly starring Clint Eastwood. <laughs>